Well, the world has a new wonder drug for preventing HIV AIDS. The FDA approving Gilead's injectable just a few days ago. And joining us right now exclusively to talk about this is Gilead Sciences Chairman and CEO Daniel O'Day. Uh, Dan, welcome. Thank, Thank you, you very much for coming here. I, I know it. that this is something you've been working on for a very long time. I think we've been talking about it for over a year at this point. But this is Gilead's focus to try and bring new drugs and hopefully eventually eradicate this disease. What, what is this latest injectable? Why is it better? It's a milestone moment, Becky, in, in the history of HIV. Uh, yes, Tugo is, is potentially the best tool we've had yet and a, and a number of great tools that could potentially end the epidemic. And the reason why is this is a first of its kind um, medicine for preventing HIV that's given only twice a year. Uh, and in clinical trials, it provided almost 100% protection against HIV, which is really unheard of. So it's, a, it's one of the most important scientific breakthroughs of our time that could help millions of people, 20 years in the making, by Gilead scientists that have really made it their life's work to end HIV. I mean, there are pills available for this at this point. Why, why does the injectable work better? What's, I mean, I would almost prefer a pill. What's, what's gone on with that? Yeah, the, the, the issue is that it's difficult to take a pill, particularly when you don't have a disease. In fact, uh, only about 50% of people that are taking pills today, and it's only about a third of the population that is defined by CDC, uh, are compliant on their medicine. And particularly with a virus like this, if you're not compliant, you can have breakthrough cases of HIV. So we needed to create a medicine that kind of met people where they were in terms of prevention. And twice a year, meets people where they are. You go into the doctor's office every six months? Correct. You get the injection? I, I didn't realize we still have 30,000 new infections a year in the United States of HIV, uh, 1.3 million worldwide, and that there are 400,000 Americans who are using some of these preventative options right now. Yeah, it's really, I don't think it's, it's spoken about that much. There's more than, to your point, 700 new cases in this country a week, and about 100 people sadly die of HIV-related illnesses. Um, and Importantly, you know, there, it, it, although it's everywhere in the country, there are certain pockets in the country, particularly the, the South, the Southern United States, states like Texas, Louisiana, Georgia, Florida, where the rates are arising disproportionately amongst women account for about 20 percent of new HIV cases in this country, about 50 percent globally. Um, and black and Latino men in the South are also more vulnerable. So this is a, this is a public health crisis in this country and around the world that yes, to go we believe, really can bend the arc of the epidemic moving You forward. want to give it to everyone, but it's expensive, yeah. and you don't know about insurance. It's, what's $28,000? $28,000 a year. And when would you, is, and has it got the 12-year protection? How long, Patent when protection? would it, you know, when would, it, would a generic be? Yeah, it's got, it's got, you know, basically the normal patent protection, that 12, which is around yeah. 12 to 15 years. But let me say something about the price, because I think that's important. We price this roughly in line with other prep medicines, branded prep medicines, similar to the, 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 the medicine we were just speaking about. And yet it provides significantly greater benefit for patients. The other thing is that, um, you know, because of the economic, beyond the human impact, the economic impact of preventing an HIV illness in this country, which can cost as much as $1.1 million lifetime costs. Right. This is highly covered by uh, prep medicines that exist today are highly covered by insurance companies, more than 90 percent. And Gilead also has programs for those that are uninsured or that need support for their copay. Uh, equally important, Joe, is the fact that we've got programs to help people outside the United States. Because if you don't stop this virus everywhere, you don't stop it anywhere. And so we ventured into uh, licensing agreements with six generic manufacturers immediately after this news last summer uh, that will provide uh, medicines to more than 120 low and middle income countries. And Gilead's also going to work with global aid organizations in the gap period of time because it takes about two years for those generic companies to get up and running uh, at no profit to Gilead the, for about two The most people. favored proposals from the Trump administration that have, have any, so you could, you would have generics being made in other countries then, but not here for 12 years. So That's once again, correct. there'd be really cheap versions other places, but not here, which immediately raises the ire of, of all the politicians. And yeah, the most favored nations, first of all, I'd love to talk about that. Um, it, it's really not geared towards the low and lower middle income under-resourced countries. It's really okay. geared towards countries that are more economically right. similar to the United States. So I think that, that is why we're so focused on getting these generic medicines to, to, uh, to, to countries around the world. You, you mentioned that you know, most of these PrEP, um, these 
preventative measures are covered by insurance, but the Supreme Court is um, watching a case right now that could overturn those requirements. What, what would happen if that's the case, if the Supreme Court says that insurance companies no longer have to pay for some of these preparatory um, preventative measures? Yeah, look, we think that the, you know, prevention is the best way to help people in this country and economically. So regardless of that, of, of that court hearing, uh, what we've seen in HIV in the past is that there's broad coverage for these medicines, particularly because of the human and economic impact for, uh, for the country. Uh, so we believe that, that it's really important that PrEP services, uh, which is preventing HIV services, are available to, to, to folks. And, and that's been the case both through private insurers and government insurers uh, in the past. So we're fully dedicated and committed to making sure that these uh, programs are available. And there are many safety net services for HIV in this country as well. Uh, beyond perhaps uh, particular insurers because of the nature of this disease. Uh, following up <clears throat> just in terms of who's going to use it, I mean, we go back to the, the drugs that are, uh, you know, like Zutbound and other drugs today. People say, okay, those are great drugs, but they're injectables. Why can't we have a pill version of it? Why does this work in the opposite direction? Yeah, uh, well, I, I think that... Um, uh, what people want is to have something that helps prevent the disease and then they can forget about it. So I think there's a bit of a different uh, motivation here. Uh, people don't want to take a daily medicine when they don't have a disease. I think that's different than some of the other medicines that you just articulated. What they want to do is, is go into a clinic, um, get protected for six months, come back in six months' time, get a test to make sure they don't have HIV. And again, with this medicine, it was nearly 100% protective against HIV. Uh, so what they want is to have an intervention and then forget about it for six months. Uh, so that's different than some of the dynamics associated with the other medicines, as you mentioned.